So thank you very, very much for giving us some time today. I'm sure you're madly busy at the moment. So busy. So many <laughs> to do. So where are you? Where are you these days? Uh, I am living in Karori. So yeah, this is this is yep. in my uh, Karori house. Yeah. It's your world right now is my world. Yeah. Karori in Wellington for the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how are you spending your time at the moment during the lockdown? Well, um, okay, so so what happens is I, I sort of, I wake up, I wake up probably around 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, I, um, I, I spend, I make myself some coffee. Um, I put the porridge on, always have to have porridge, you know, very important to have porridge in states of emergency and all states um, with fruit and yogurt, yeah. Um, I make some coffee um, and then I go and I, usually I'll, I will draw my little diary comic. That'll be the first thing that I'll do. And, um, and then it'll take me like maybe about an hour to an hour and a half to draw my little diary comic um, during which time I've drunk my pot of coffee. And then I will eat my porridge and it'll be really, really, because I've got like the whole grain oats. And after an hour, the whole grain oats have broken right down and it's really delicious and creamy. And uh, so, yeah, it's like it's reached its optimal porridge state. So, um, yeah, so, so and, and, um, and then I will go and scan the, scan the comic. Um, I do actually think, you know, like now that PB Tech has opened up, I've been like holding out on by myself an iPad Pro with a special pencil and I just think oh god I could just I could just do some internet shopping I could just buy myself an iPad Pro and then I wouldn't need to worry about these stupid Stiedler pens which are really great I mean they're really great for the first week when the ink is really black and hasn't started to uh, run down and the nib is still really sharp and hasn't started to get all kind of blunt and feathery like I love this pen when it's when it's new and then when it becomes old I begin to hate it which is why I think you know, I could cash out this whole um, this whole scanning, taking into Photoshop, fixing up all my mistakes, then cropping into the little um, you know square panels, which will fit perfectly into Instagram. Um, yeah, so 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 that's so that's my that's my comics process, and then and then I I actually have a day job, which I try to do. I try. And I struggle to do. And I also have children that that their entire circadian rhythms have changed, and they've taken to sleeping in until about eleven o'clock in the morning. So, uh, and then and then they sort of you know fish around and rummage around in the kitchen and make themselves really unwholesome snacks. Like I go, there's porridge, there's porridge and fruit. It's really wholesome. You should have porridge and fruit. And they ignore that and make themselves white bread Nutella sandwiches. So, um, yeah. So yes, there's the, uh, so, so there's the, um, and then of course I have to, the other thing which I'm doing while I'm working with my day job as a graphic designer for a government department, I, um, so I, I'll have like a stand up meeting for my, for my, um, I'm talking too much about my, is this, am I going on too much here? No, no this is thrilling. Okay, 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 okay. well every, every morning at 9.30 we have a stand up meeting at my, a Zoom stand up meeting where we put our little headphones on and we go around and our, respective houses and and tell everybody what we're working on or not working on you know we're kind of we're, we're making attempts to work on it so so yeah so that's that's what that's that's the other thing which I'm sort of simultaneously doing I'm sort of opening up my work email and uh, you know sending emails and and you know trying to force myself to 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 refine an infographic or to lay out a pdf document or or something like that yeah, so so that and but then I'm also obsessively checking Instagram and Twitter and Facebook to see if anybody's liked my comic that I've posted and you know feeling kind of getting that little endorphin hit if somebody says something really nice like your comic really helps me get through and oh my god that's just so it that's exactly right or, or you know that kind of thing I'm just like a bit of a this is kind of why I stopped doing blog comics because I am too slightly addicted to like a you know external endorsement it's sort of like I say it gives me this little endorphin rush but then I get this terrible crash afterwards and so if I've had a good day of comics when people have really loved my comic and they've shared it lots and told me I'm amazing then I'll just be all kind of like ah hyper and buoyed and excited and then the next day when people don't notice it so much I'll kind of this terrible depression will overtake me and I have to keep on telling myself no it's not actually you're not doing this for external endorsement it's not about what other people think what it is is you're doing this for yourself so that when all of this is done when this is over which I'm hoping it will be over 
I will be able to look back and see this is what life was like at this particular specific moment. That's really why I'm doing it. That's the actual reason. But I do get like quite distracted in that whole kind of social media paradigm of, uh, you know, wanting to have some kind of external validation and some kind of external response. Yeah, so, and the reason my day is sort of like filled up with what probably everybody else is doing, going on walks, trying to avoid the neighbours, particularly trying to avoid the joggers who are always running really fast and do not want to get off the pavement and then you have to kind of scramble off or climb up a bank or something like that because there they are with their great big cloud of droplets and they will not stop for the life of them. And, you know, and then cooking dinner for my children. So I do make them have a wholesome dinner. It's not Nutella sandwiches for dinner, although sometimes it is fish fingers for dinner. And, um... And then my other little ritual, which I've been doing weirdly, um, is um, playing my cello. So I will spend kind of about an hour every night playing my cello, which is something which I didn't do. Like I learned it as a, as a high school student, and I probably learned it through to about the age of 19. And um, then I put it aside for about 20, 20 plus years and didn't play it at all. But, um, but weirdly, I've been finding it kind of a balm for this whole you know, internet saturated world. It's something which I have to do without looking at my phone and without looking at my screen. And I just sort of have to concentrate on making the notes sound good. So it's sort of, I think it's my form of meditation because I'm sort of, I'm sort of your classic, slightly ADHD monkey mind type person who can't actually do meditation. So if I've got something like the cello to do meditation on, then that's a far more effective way for me to, you know, think about something other than my own neuroses or my own life clutter or whatever's on Twitter or the news or whatever, Facebook at the moment. So yeah, there, there we go. There's my day. It sounds quite busy to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. an active day. Do you find, I mean, it, it's really interesting to me that you've started doing the diary comics again after having stopped. Um, are you finding that it's helping you with the lockdown? Or because you talked about how it does tend to get you a bit locked into the social media reactions. Uh, no, I think it does. I think it does help me with the um, the lockdown. I mean, I think it, what's really important. Well, for me, I think it's you know important to be able to structure my day. So I've got like tasks that I have to complete, and then when I've completed those tasks, I have a kind of a sense that you know. I've, I've got something done and that's my life hasn't slipped away. And also I think the other th reason why I think it's useful for me is that it kind of makes me look at the world in a particular way. So, um, so it kind of makes me look at the world in a humorous way because all of this stuff could really get me down and um, you know, and it does sometimes, sometimes I do feel kind of hugely depressed. I mean, I think probably for me, my major thing is that um you know, I kind of, um, you know, I separated from my ex-husband about 18 months ago and I am in a new relationship with a new man. Um, we've been seeing each other for about four and a half months and, um, and we're in separate, he's, 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 we're in separate parts of um, Wellington. So, so we're, we're in two different bubbles. So, um, so, so that's kind of something which gets me down. So it's good for me to have, you know, some, all of these kind of probably, yeah, I know there's a sort of this, there is quite a big movement, like you shouldn't feel you should be productive during lockdown. It's actually a hugely stressful time. So, I mean, if you just have to take to your bed with your duvet and, you know, watch trash TV, then, you know, so be it. But for me, I think, you know, having, having concrete things to do, like I've got to draw this comic, I've got to see the funny side in life or the kind of absurdist. I think it's not necessarily funny. It's just the sort of absurdist, you know, I think, you know, there's that kind of line from the Smith song, you know, we can laugh about it now, but at the time it was terrible. And that's basically my kind of, that's my kind of modus operandi for the comics. Like it might be terrible at the time, but I'm going to be able to laugh about it later. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so I think probably for me, having kind of a discreet defined activity gives me that sense of achievement and gives me the sense that you know I'm making something of my days and I've got I've got some structure and I can make it through because I do this at this time and this at this time and this at this time and then the day will be over and then that's another day and hopefully it's another day closer to the end of lockdown another day closer to when I can go and hang out with my boyfriend again and life can resume as normal so yeah yes yeah and during the day 
um, does it mean that you you experience things differently and are you always walking around thinking oh no that's good material yeah or, you know looking at things more actively yeah no, no definitely 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 i think that there's a particular mindset that you get into um and i definitely noticed that because um because i did for many years as you know and i have this book let me be frank which shh, where is it i have this book with all my comics and of course it's not here uh but um Anyway, I have this, uh, the thing is that I did for many years, I did diary comics and I, you know, I started off with a hiss and a roar and I used to do them five days out of seven and then I kind of slipped down to maybe a couple of days a week. And when you are drawing diary comics, yeah, you do kind of put on your noticing eyes and you begin to listen to what people are saying. You begin to see funny things in the world. You begin to kind of view little situations as kind of little kind of skits, little kind of dramatic moments that you can potentially use. So yeah, there's definitely definitely a special kind of noticing when you're involved, engaged in that project of making diary comics. And, um, and I did notice that when I stopped making diary comics, it did kind of seem like you know, not, there wasn't anything to write comics about, and I couldn't quite remember how it was that I did manage to write comics about my boring days. And I mean, I think that's that's probably the thing is that that since we are in isolation and all of the fun things have been taken away, well, lots of the fun things have been taken away. Not all, of, obviously, there's loads of fun things you can still do, but you know, like I'm kind of a slightly, um, you know, kind of an introverted, extroverted type person, so I love going to concerts and I love, I really like going to parties and I like going into cafes and restaurants and, you know, I kind of like went to the Newtown Festival and I mean, all those kind of things I love, I love to do. And, um, and now there seems to be, there's nothing to do apart from, you know, yeah, be at home. And um, yeah, no, I suppose, I suppose it sort of means that you, you notice that there is dramatic possibilities in all those small banal moments of seeming nothingness because um well, in, in a way i kind of feel as though quite a few of you know the little the, the the micro interactions that we have during the day are um you know just like a small distillation of the huge interactions that happen across the world so um you know so so for instance my kind of slight frustration for instance today i posted a comic about going to the supermarket and especially putting on my latex gloves and then somebody at the supermarket saying, oh, you have to sanitize your gloves and me saying, but they're gloves, they are already sanitary. And, uh, and, um, and, and that to me is sort of, you know, the kind of the power, sort of representative of the power dynamic in the world. It's just a, it's an interaction between me and one person, but it's also representative of, you know, us as citizens in the state, the government has said, you have to do this thing. And lots of us are like, but what, that doesn't seem logical. And I just want to be able to go see my boyfriend, or I just want to go and, you know, hang out with my mother. It doesn't seem logical. I just, I don't want to do what you tell me to do. Um, but the state has said, you have to do this thing. So, um, yeah, so, so in a way, I kind of feel as though, yeah, lots of those tiny little, tiny little things are kind of metaphors for, you know, the huge kind of turnings and machinations in, in the world. And, and our kind of, our sense of powerless and our sense of, you know, our kind of the weird um, state that we are in having to obey authority and having our own personal agency taken away from us. And But then also at the same time, you know, knowing that the person at the supermarket is just another human and they've been told to tell us to do that and you know that we need to feel empathy for them because it's hard for them as well and it might feel frustrating and ridiculous but you know they've been told by their manager you've got to get everybody to sanitize even though that even if they're wearing gloves so you know i mean i think that yeah i think it is i think i think writing diary comics definitely kind of hones your hones your noticing skills so yeah, and I think again, yeah, probably at the risk of repeating myself. I think, yeah, I think that um, there is nothing too small that is, you know, that is unworthy of our notice and our attention. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, are you reading at the moment or watching things? And if so, what are you? Um, I am reading novels. That's kind of what I do. I like to read novels. Uh, I'm not reading very fast at the moment. I just finished um, Jenny Offal's Weather, which is kind of like a, it's it's a kind of a, an, and in a weird way, it's, it had had lots of um, parallels between, you know, our life 
that we're experiencing now um because it was i mean she was kind of like she was she had this great anxiety about armageddon and um and it was kind of preppers preppers was was quite a, a an obsession so so yeah so I, i'm really i'm not really watching very much at the moment i'm not really watching very much netflix i used to watch quite a lot i used to watch lots of series and i i'm not really um i am um, I mean, I do kind of, I will often read comics on Instagram and, um, you know, comics that get sent through to me. So I, I think um, in terms of stuff that, that I'm, um, I always enjoy is that I, I always enjoy reading Gabrielle Bell's comics. She's quite inspiring. And she's kind of yet another one of those that people, you kind of think, how does she do it? Her life, like nothing really happens in her life either. She just talks to her neighbours and she kind of feels angsty most of the time. And yet her comics just are endlessly fascinating and compelling. And, you know, I think whenever I kind of think, oh, my life is too boring. Why am I bothering writing? I kind of think of, you know, Gabrielle Bell and how incredibly inventive she can get within, you know, her quiet, you know, she kind of lives by herself in this small apartment and 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 yet, you know, she's just got this really compelling voice that I always return to and I mean somebody else that I follow on um I sort of follow quite a few cartoonists on Instagram and I've noticed and I mean I've done this as well that's part of the constraint of my comic is that when I used to draw blog diary comics they would they could sprawl on for pages and pages and once I even wrote a like a 72 page blog diary comic which is a bit out of control, but um, but but with Instagram you can only post if you're going to do it in the little square, the little you know, the little gallery format. You can only post ten images, and so there are quite a few cartoonists posting these micro comics. So um, I will often read comics by um by by Sarah Glidden and by um you know Lucy Knisley and by um Eleanor Davis and um yeah just whoever kind of comes up in my comes up in my uh, my Instagram feed she says scrolling now where are they where are they yeah and and you know and oh and um you know Summer Pierre she's another person and Glennis Forks kind of lots of probably lots of women probably writing in that domestic sphere I I you know I, I quite enjoy that particular particular sphere probably because I kind of recognize it yeah how, how is it how different is it doing diary comics to doing something like Mansfield and me like that was a, a long work which was clearly structured and took a long time to do was your process very different for that um it was yeah it was kind of different yeah 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 um it was I mean I probably have she says if I turn around do I have um in here I I probably have my I probably have my little kind of journals of you know, when I was writing writing notes for me she says no I don't I won't be able to find it anyway anyway I would just draw like scribbly I would just draw scribbly kind of comics she says, I'll just draw, draw, draw scribbly comics in my journal. Oh no, here we go. This is, this is my, this is a Mansfield thing. Here we go. This is like a Mansfield journal thing. Here we go. Like random scribbly comics. And, um, and then I'd sort of translate them. I would translate them onto paper. Here we go. Here's, here's, here's another random scribbly comic. Oh, I used ink that day. I must've got sick of. Oh, and so, and so for instance, okay, so here we go. Here's an example. So for instance, the year I left school, I also found my first boyfriend. He may have looked a little bit like John Middleton Murray. So here we go. This is this is the draft. This is the draft. Okay, and I've got Mansfield and me next to me, and I can probably find, I can probably find the uh, the actual the actual thing that it became. So it's kind of the same. The summer I left high school, I met my first boyfriend. So here we go. Let's go find a compare and contrast page. So here we go. The year right. There we go. There's there is the draft. There is the final. Oh, more kissing, more kissing in the final. Yeah. No, John Middleton Murray. He kind of comes along. But yeah. So so I think I I think I just did lots of scribbly pages and refined it from there. That's this is my kind of form of thumbnailing. And um. So but, you, you, go, you go straight to that. You don't write a script first no, and then. No, 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 no. no. But there was a sort of a previous, there was like a previous kind of thumbnailing type thing where I had gone through all of 
Mansfield's entire biography and comicized all of that. Well, not all of that, because some bits would just seem boring to me. But um, and so there was a kind of there was an editing process. So I'd kind of drawn all these rough comics, and then out of those rough comics, I chose you know certain comics that had the most kind of interest to me to refine and to um, yeah to to shape into an actual story. So yeah, so so yeah, it was just there was lots of there was lots of um, I know I don't script. I don't script. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's how you are scripting. You're scripting by thumbnailing. Scripting by drawing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, and with your diary comics, you don't do a rough draft or do you sometimes do that? Uh, no, no. I just draw straight to um, straight to paper. And, you know, again, with again, with the, the comics that I'm doing at the moment, like here we go, here they are on paper drawn with my trusty, my trusty Steedler. So there we go. Um, again, I, I basically, um, I mean, I've gone and drawn the the grid in pencil and then I've gone and drawn over that, like the six panel grid, I've drawn that in pencil. But I, um, and again, see, this is, this is like a kind of a, I mean, I did actually naturally start it this way, but I noticed that Gabrielle Bell also kind of does a similar sort of thing. It always has the same kind of size, size grid as, as opposed to getting all kind of, kind of visual and fancy comic artisty and having cool big panels and little panels and different size, you know, this and that. Um, kind of in, in, in order to um, to focus my mind on kind of just sort of trying to tell a simple story, you know, I just have that constraint of having the same size, which, you know, in a way is sort of a sacrifice because it is, does make it a little bit visually boring, but it's also kind of a it's also a bit of a lifesaver as well because you, whatever you want to tell, you've got to tell within that fixed square and you've got to tell it within those 10 panels. So, so yeah, it kind of gives this constraint which makes like a project seem far more achievable rather than thinking, oh, I've got to, I've got to draw a comic and I've got to be really visually interesting and I've got to draw the best artwork and I've got to, I've got to have some diagonal things and I've got to have some flashing things and I've got to have some pop-out things. And, you know, I mean, sometimes... Sometimes, and in Mansfield and me, I mean, I did, I did try and, you know, force myself, she's here, I'm just kind of randomly flicking, I did force myself to do different size panels, and not entirely sure if I ever managed a diagonal panel, but, I, you know, I did manage like nine panel pages, and it, they weren't all six panel pages, so, um, yeah, but, but to me, um, you know, that's, that's something which I kind of have to, you know, force myself out of my comfort zone to do, yeah. There's a line in um, I Love Dick, the Chris Grass novel, uh, where someone says, um, they're talking about music, but they say when the form is in place, the rest is pure feeling. Yeah. Um, but like that's one reason sometimes to set up just a standard regular form that you use for a page. And then yeah. you don't have to think about that. You can just focus in on the, the, the emotion of what you're telling or the, the story you're trying to tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, I do kind of feel as though um, comics do have quite a lot in common with music because it is kind mm. of a rhythm. There's a form, there's very much, it's very much formed, defined by a rhythm and a form and, you know, like a beat and, uh, you know, the fact that there are six panels on the page, like there's a 4-4 four, four beat or a 3-4 beat or whatever, that kind of thing. And that, you know, like the whole kind of classic three-minute pop song um, you know, I, I'm trying to do my comics version of the three minute pop song and my, my 10 panel, my 10 panel little thing. So, yeah, yeah. And it feels to me like um, the way that you work, your process, uh, it, it doesn't feel like someone who sort of rigorously plans everything step by step and then ticks the boxes as they go through the plan. It feels to me more like you're jamming. Um, in using musical terms, that you spend a while jamming and you're playing around with melodies and rhythms and structures. This is with Mansfield and me, filling sketchbooks with um, <clears throat> with you noodling around with the story, and then you take bits of those of what you've produced and you assemble it in, into something that's more polished. And mm. does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, I would definitely say that's my approach. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good way of describing it. More, more yeah. a, a, a jazz, a, a jammer rather than improviser, a... Improviser, yeah, imp improviser. Yeah. Well, and it definitely, and definitely with my, um, you know, my little comics, which I'm doing at the moment as well. I'm just, I'm now, now it's sort of slightly maddening me that I can't find my... Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Here are some more. 
here's some more Mansfield and me. Oh yeah, so here we go. This is so so I did again, you know, as you say, jamming. So this is more more kind of draft pages from Mansfield and me. And I did sometimes go, oh I'm sick of you know here here's the pencil sketches. I'd, I'd go, oh I'm sick of drawing and I'm sick of drawing in pen. I want to I want to draw in I want to draw in kind of uh, in watercolor and um, yeah and this so um there we go there we go more watercolor more watercolor. And and then that of course would be refined down to um, actually all the Mansfield sections ended up being refined down into kind of black and white, which you know I still sometimes think, oh maybe I should have made that colour because you know she did have quite a colourful life. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, there is definitely there's definitely a very much for me. Um, and I and I because I'm a novelist as well. Not that I've written any novels for a very long time. I've just planned on writing novels. Um, is that I'm not the kind of person who knows where they're going. I'm the kind of person who has an idea of where they're starting. And then once I've, you know, got to that point, then I will know what the next point is and I'll know what the next point is. And so, so it's very kind of like a, yeah, kind of an intuitive a sort of approach and, um, and, and, you know, you kind of write until you feel as though you've kind of formed a shape or you've sort of like kind of done the dramatic arc. You've, you've, you've planted a little seed of an idea and you've somehow circled back to that idea and resolved that idea. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, I mean, I do kind of like, I do, I do like my um, stories to have a bit of a narrative thread. Like I've liked them to have a bit of a theme. I don't really like to, I kind of feel sort of antsy if, if, they just seem like that it's just kind of random panels, you know, and there's no story and there's no thread and there's no kind of idea that I'm exploring. So, so definitely that's the thing which I'm aiming to do, uh, whether I succeed or not. I mean, I think sometimes, I think that's also the thing with diary comics and that's the thing which I've been telling myself is that sometimes I draw slightly shit diary comics, but, um, but, but I'm kind of like hoping to look at it as a whole and that, once I've amassed a body of work, um, I can look back at it and say, well, this is more successful and this is less successful. And even if this one is less successful, it's still adding to this theme, which is building. And because often you don't actually realize what your themes are, what your kind of central preoccupations are until, you know, retrospect, re retrospectively. And I often found that, you know, when I was trying to write novels as well, is that, um, so for instance, I wrote this novel, this is my last novel, which I wrote, called The Fall of Light. And, uh, you know, that, that novel, and I did actually put comics in it. See, I, I'm not sure if that was a good idea. It might've been a really dumb idea, but I did it all the same. Um, I, um, it, I sort of started with this sort of idea that there was, you know, this guy who had had a near-death experience and, um, but he had not sort of walked into the light or had any kind of heavenly kind of epiphany and and that slightly kind of tortured him this kind of idea that you know you know there was no afterlife um and and so that was the kind of idea which I started the novel with and then the novel sort of turned into quite a different thing and but I didn't really know what the novel was about until I'd finished the novel and then I was like oh actually that's what it's about so now I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to rewrite it and I'm going to pick out the themes which are actually what the novel is about um, and and I'm going to I'm going to kind of highlight and polish and sort of um, add to those and you know I, I mean I guess maybe that's you know possibly you know what might happen with an accumulation of diary comics as well that you know if you if for instance if for instance i went crazy and you know the lockdown kept on going for a year and i went crazy then um then then you know there would be kind of a process of you know throwing out probably half and if i just i decided to make a book the process would be throwing out half the comics and uh, and arranging them in a way that you know thematically you know, things seemed more important or, and had more weight. So, yeah. I sometimes imagine um, what, what would happen if, if the lockdown ended and the pandemic was over and everything was fine again. But some of us, we never noticed. Like we didn't, no one told us and we went online and we... <laughs> <laughs> We're continuing to be in quarantine for the next three years until someone knocks on our door. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a nightmare. Um, what's your what? What's something you really love about making comics? Um, I think um, I think that I think 
What I just like about comics is probably similar to what I like about playing the cello, and that is just the manual process of my pen against paper and trying to make little pictures, you know, just like trying to make little worlds inside my squares. And so, you know, quite often, um, so quite often here, I, I, I actually tried to write this other comic and I realized, oh no, this is too big for my project. I sort of like, because just before I, um, we went into lockdown, my you know, my son and I went up to Starship and he had like a special heart procedure where he had an extra electrical pathway, um, you know, cauterized off his heart, which kind of seems like it's part of all this because it was just on the cusp of just before lockdown happened and we were really lucky to have this operation. But but it's also a way too big a story. Like I, I've done my first page and I, I, like I haven't even, we're still in last year. We're still in 2000 and, no, actually we're possibly, yeah, we're still in, 2019 so I can't possibly turn this into a 10, 10 page comic but but I think probably the thing which I like about drawing comics is you know the idea that you kind of I, I will often start with the people I'll start with the people and I will um start with what they're saying because that will be the kind of thing that I'm trying to communicate often because my, my comics are very quite word based probably because I started off as a novelist um but then you know the idea that you can sort of add detail and you can suddenly turn something into a room with dimensions and that you can kind of suggest that beyond the room is a window and then outside the window is sort of trees in another world and just the you know kind of adding up all the details and the suggestions that it's not just this tiny little panel out of this tiny little panel is kind of sprouting you know all of these other worlds and peoples and you know dimension dimensionality I mean I kind of think I quite like that just the the power of the line to suggest so much more than what what it actually is you know I think that's but yeah and I think yeah like I say it's just the process it's the process of drawing and I just get pleasure from doing you know kind of simple process kind of manual tasks which is probably why I still draw on paper as opposed to you know having rushed out and got myself even though actually I, I hear that the you've got have you got an iPad Pro you, uh, Dylan? No, no I, I I have a um, Cintiq, a great big um, thing, and which I haven't really started using properly. Um, I'm a bit scared of it, but I'm 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 slowly getting used to it. Um, yeah. But you know, I you know I know Jonathan King is doing. He did his graphic novel mostly on the iPad Pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I mean, I think it does actually mirror the experience of you know, ink against paper pretty well. So yeah, I'm probably just showing my age. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's texturally different. Like the, the sensation, it's a hard surface. Yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, I just, I think I, yeah, I mean, I think I get pleasure out of, you know, just having this sort of like physical build up. So I'm like sticking my, I went and stole one of my children's clear files and I'm sticking my comics into clear files. And so when I was also here, this is in my study, I can show you all this. When I was doing regularly doing diary comics, I would um like I would file all my diary comics and and for me oh yeah here's all my old Metro comics Metro's just gone this is like uh, but you know just the sort of like the actual physicality of having all of these drawings it sort of gives me this sort of sense of satisfaction when I think oh God I'm wasting all my life and I've got nothing to show for it I'm like actually I have all of these folders of drawings that are you know are probably going to go up in a file but um yes it's it's the kind of again you know it's just this oh here we go this is my this is my really like big fat look at all these drawings look at all these drawings you know when you put them on the computer they're just like files and you can't actually see the weight of them but I have folders and folders of drawings and you know this is giving me quite a nice breeze here I'm getting a little kind of you can't do that with computer files yeah <laughs> is, is it more or less satisfying than getting lots of likes on an Instagram post uh, yeah, I think probably ultimately it's more satisfying having all of your, all of your, all of your drawings. I kind of also quite like the idea of you know, well probably probably what will happen is that my descendants will just take all of these folders and either chuck them into a skip or, or take them down to the op shop. But but I, there's an alternate fantasy where they all like kind of you know look through the drawings and go gosh, what a curious grandmother we had, or, you know, gosh, what's this weird thing she's drawing? What's everybody got in their hands? Is that like, it's like little, I don't know, like brick or, yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they might all end up in the Turnbull, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your descendants might have to make a time to go and have a look at them there. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So is there a particular, a particular cartoonist that you feel like you've learned a lot from that you apply in your own comics? 
Um, there are particular cartoonists. I, you know, I'm like I'm I'm in the wrong room. I've got this other room which uh, which has all of my comic books in it. Um, you know, there are particular co comics which you know I've I've read and I've I've um particularly you know wanted to yeah aspired to to be like them. I mean, there's your kind of classic ones that everybody says, which is, you know, Alison Bechdel and Marjan Satrapi. I mean, that's a kind of benchmark. And, and, um, and I, you know, I always, I just completely adore um, Gillian Tamaki's artwork. And um, I love Eleanor Davis's artwork. And, and, um, and, and in terms of storytelling, I, you know, I, I think I've already mentioned Gabrielle Bell. And, you know, and again, you know, um, Sarah Glidden as well. She's you know got beautiful kind of artwork and um yeah and and there's um you know there was oh there was this amazing um German German um comic who also I think it's generally the people who 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 do do the kind of the hand drawn stuff that that I am most um drawn to um Judith I can't remember I've got a terrible memory for names anyway like lots of the I really love lots of the kind of the Belgian and the European artists particularly the ones who are using um using using ink and and watercolor and yeah that look very gestural and, and hand drawn yeah and I mean like I've got a kind of a basically an endless list um but, yes, um, but, I, but but like my, the top of my head, I should have written it down. But I should have I should have compiled it before you interviewed me, Dylan. But I can send you a list. Yeah, only a supplement, yeah. a supplementary list. Um, and what about mediums uh, other than comics? Like, a, a, is there a lesson that you've learned from something in a different medium that you apply to your comics? Um, y yes, I think definitely. Um. I, well, I mean, you know, animation is the obvious, the obvious one, which I think is um, a very influential film, film as well. I feel like film and comics have, you know, a lot to, um, kind of a lot of synergy, probably because, you know, like film, for instance, for instance, if you um, watch a film which has been made out of a novel, like everybody will go, oh, the novel is heaps better because, you know, the film is only showing a tiny fraction of what the novel has got to show. But, well, I mean, what the film is doing is it's showing something entirely different. It's kind of giving you this kind of fully visualised sensory experience. And, you know, perhaps some of the rich inner life has been kind of, you know, had to be discarded because... Um, you know, you've basically got to rely on the actor biting their lip or, you know, that terrible, tortured kind of great pools of eyes. So, so I mean, I think, yeah, I definitely think film, is, film has got a lot, to, I mean, film has got a lot to um, give, a um, lot to offer, probably, yeah, like I said, because it has to be really concise and it has to be, has to use um, probably kind of, well, I mean, it's got lots of tools available to it that comics don't have. I mean, it actually has music. It's got music to manipulate us with, which, you know, I think is like the, the, the tool to rule us all. I mean, I'd say music as well. I mean, I think I think any kind of medium, I think, I, actually, I think that everything is influential. Television, music, um, poetry. Um, yeah, I think that anything, anything that has to be concise is, uh, you know, like is valuable for the, fact that the comics form. Yeah. It's interesting that you highlight concision there. Mm, Things being yeah. nice, that that's central to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, so, I think that comics are quite a, you know, they take up a lot of space, yeah. don't they? They're quite a, they're quite, kind of like a man spready kind of medium, really. It's just like, I'm going to say something, I'm going to take it, I've got to draw it big, because I, you know, I can't say yet all that I want to say. But, you know, in a way, in a way, you know, I mean, it kind of cuts a lot of, that out of the story as well so yeah mm. um so uh my last question really well i've got two questions left but um first of all is there any any advice you would have for a young design student who's um about to head out into this strange transforming world um yeah, well, I don't know what the world is going to be like after this, but um, yeah, I mean, from at my job anyway, um, you know, they kind of 
I'm, I've been asked to make um, social media animation advertisements. So I've been doing like a little bit of animation at my work, which I quite enjoy. Like I say, I think that comics is, having worked in the medium of comics, it sort of set me up quite well for, I didn't train as an animator at all. And I've just sort of taught myself how to use um, Adobe After Effects. And, um, and but, but I do feel as though like lots of the skills that you learn in comics, um, you can use them in animation. So for instance, storyboarding. So, so you know, here we go. This is, this is just, here we go. Here are my storyboarding, storyboards for my social media advertisements for my work. And they've got really, I mean, they're basically, they're just comics. They're just, I've just drawn these comics, but, um, but um, blah, 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 I'm not showing you too much. But so, so my work seems to think that, um, that, that social media, is going to be is going to be reasonably big. Well, that's no revelation, is it? But um, but you know the idea of the idea of sort of you're ahead of the curve. But <laughs> so ahead of you're the well curve. ahead of the curve. Oh, ahead of the curve! What a revelation! Oh my God! Social media is a big thing for 2020. Yeah. Um. So so but 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 so that's that's the thing. I'm going to be generating generating content for um for. Instagram advertisements and Facebook advertisements and and that kind of thing. So, so I mean, I guess I, I and you know, I mean, I think probably you know, with the recent demise of Bauer, you know, like all of the magazines, um, all of the magazines shutting down. You know, I mean, I, I you know, we are sort of increasingly being driven to these digital platforms. And I mean, I was a, I sort of came up as a, you know, as a classic, probably just because of my age, and I started. Being a graphic designer in the 1990s, what I initially started doing was print design, and print design was what I loved and what I got really excited about. And you know, there still is a lot of print design, and you know, there's still a books and there's still a kind of lots of physical objects. But but you know, the idea that like a great proportion of New Zealand's printed magazines now no longer exist kind of makes you think, ah, oh, you know, is print actually now sort of no longer? such a such a thing i mean I, obviously i always think i think that the the physical object the physical printed form will always have a place in the world um yeah look at us both with all our books behind us we all we all love books but yeah i mean i guess i guess that whole sort of um no, what, what i'm probably trying to say is that that um digital storytelling you know animation being able to kind of communicate online is yeah obviously that's hardly a revelation, though, is it? I'm not. I'm not. I'm just teaching you how to suck eggs. But um, yeah, <laughs> but I really don't know. I really don't know what the world is going to be like. But I'm sure that there is. You know, there's going to be, in, given how saturated we are, or well, not necessarily how saturated we are, but how endless our appetites are. There's always going to be a, a place for people. Are always going to be wanting to communicate messages. I mean, I feel as though this kind of COVID-19 thing has been sort of an expert um, kind of communication uh, exercise, um, not only through the clear messaging that Jacinda and, um, you know, her government have given us, but also through the visual messaging. It's been, you know, there've been lots of kind of quite striking graphics. There's that kind of diagonal yellow, you know, that's kind of very memorable, that diagonal yellow COVID-19 communications. As soon as you see those diagonal yellow and white, colours you know oh this is a this is a COVID-19 communication and um and also there were some quite striking visual communications as well you know before we all went into lockdown like um I don't know if you had around the university all of those Ministry of Health cough in your elbow advertisements and that was quite visually striking as well the blue elbow I might be misremembering blue elbow the orange kind oh sorry the red cough in your elbow and so I mean I think there's always going to be a place for for you know graphic designers young graphic designers um visual communicators to um you know really distill messages and to communicate them in a kind of an arresting clear kind of a way a way that you can kind of instantly absorb and you don't have to read screeds and screeds of text and yeah and like i say um we we will endlessly require we, we always need to have be told stories we we humans have an endless appetite for stories and stories are kind of calming and illuminating and alarming and um yeah i mean i was sort of also you know um yeah there is there is the i i yesterday i was just tagged in facebook somebody went and said that the police are looking for um you know people to make their own little um safety message videos and that they would pay fifteen hundred dollars for them and you know that they had this little kind of device where i guess they'd have their police COVID 19 
kind of um, animation to start off with, like this is a message from the police and then you know, general public would make their little videos, which is a graphic design, as a design um, challenge to make a kind of a visually appealing and a storytelling challenge, a visually appealing and um, compelling little story. So yeah, so I mean, I think that there's, there's still in this new world, there, are, there will be loads and loads of opportunities for visual storytellers, graphic designers, anybody who can communicate visually and yeah. That. But who really knows what the, the world is going to be? And I do kind of really feel so badly for all of those businesses and all of those, you know, all those, you know, workers who've lost their jobs and, and are without income and, you know, I'm kind of cushioned from that with my government job. And, you know, I feel incredibly, incredibly grateful and incredibly lucky. And I really should focus next week and work a lot harder because I am really, really, really lucky to have a job. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, my last question. Um, what are you most looking forward to ab about when lockdown finishes? Um, what are you looking forward to doing? <laughs> what am I most looking forward to? Well, you know, I'm just mainly looking forward to going and seeing my boyfriend. That's what I mean. But I did actually, you know, because it was, it was this kind of terrible cascade effect where you know, I had Amanda Palmer tickets and they were cancelled and I had tickets to see um, Hugo Girl at Bats and they were cancelled and everybody was live streaming them and I was just like, I don't want to watch the live stream. I actually want to go and sit down in a theatre and I want to I, I watch the live music or I want to watch the live show. So I think probably, probably just being able to go back to gigs and, you know, just being able to kind of jostle up against people, that would be, that would be nice, you know? All right. Well, hopefully we'll all be jostling up against each other soon. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. That was absolutely fabulous. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in person before too long. Yeah, yeah. You too.